what's going on guys your boy terry by reacts here and i am back with another game of thrones um theory lore whatever you want to call it reaction here hope you guys enjoy this um i'm gonna have some videos lined up for this week so you guys can keep watching game of thrones stuff until we get to the premiere of season eight episode one okay so this one is one that has been on the list for a while and i finally got to do it and this is the storyline that ruined game of thrones and from the information that i've had when i was actually watching the show reacting to it you guys have told me that this was one of the the, the worst um thing that they ever did in the series the tv series and that is what they did with the with the with the dorn storyline you guys hated what they did with the Dorn storyline um you know and to me in in a certain sense it was so unnecessary it was like the the only person that would that i cared for in um from Dorn was Oberyn that's it because he the, the his character i mean don't get me wrong that dude that played Oberyn, one of my favorite actors to date today. You know what I'm saying? Know him from the Narco series um, on Netflix, and he kills it every time. Like, so, um, he grabbed my attention soon, but I didn't know that was gonna like totally just like the the aftermath after the mountain killed him and and just everything that they did after that with the door and storyline just did not make any sense like you know what i'm saying though them killing the prince is it's just uh and then getting captured it, it's just like are you just here to be somebody for cersei to kill you know what i'm saying like i just didn't get it i just didn't get it so i'm guessing that this is what this is about i didn't check to see what it's about um, but I'm thinking that is it, but if it's something else, then it might be something else. But that's when you talk about like the storyline that ruin, ruined Game of Thrones, a lot of people refer to the Dorn storyline. Okay. So let's jump into this, man. Let's get to it. Okay. It's only around 10 minutes, 11 minutes. So let's go. All righty. I hate everything about the Dorn plot in the television <laughs> what did show. I say? <laughs> and before you call me a butthurt book nerd, I just want you to know that you're right. I am mad that the brilliant tapestry that was the Dornish plotline in George R. R. Martin's book series was reduced to this neo-feminist nonsense. This pandering drivel that made caricatures out of layered and complex characters from George R. R. Martin's book series. In the novels, Dorne is the most equal out of all seven kingdoms. When it comes to inheritance, it goes by birth. That means that if the Starks were in Dorne, that Sansa would have become the Lady of Winterfell once Rob died, and not Bran. As a matter of a fact, in A Feast for Crows, a woman, Ariane Martell, the daughter of Doran Martell, is the future ruler of all of Dorne. Dorne is very much about men and women having equal standing in society and working together to form the best society possible. But what did the show give us? You guys told me all Weak about that. Weak men will never rule Dorn. <laughs> By the way, that's totally like not how Dornish politics would work. Elaria Sand is like not a member of the royal family like at all. And I think the Dornish people actually have some integrity. I don't know that they would just be okay with three kings right? slaying bastards. I was bastards wondering why they were just standing You know, murdering there. the prince is kind of a big crime, and I hate how Game of Thrones portrays it as like no one in all of Dorne stood up against these random women that just murdered the royal family. You see, George R. R. Martin is a real feminist. I mean, the classic definition of feminism, which is equality of the sexes. Not all the women kill the men and just take over everything. That's what Game of Thrones is giving to us. And if I was a woman, I would be insulted. I'm insulted and I'm not even a woman. But if I was a woman, I would be insulted by this portrayal of women as these heartless, meaninglessly antagonistic, vicious people that have no respect for even their own family members. We're talking about women that literally murder their own 
uncle and their prince, their flesh and blood, in order to avenge their father who purposely entered a perfectly legal trial by combat Makes in no order to sense. avenge the death that, of his sister. So these strong, intelligent, powerful female characters' idea of avenging their father who wanted to avenge the death of his family is to murder the rest of his family, including his brother and his nephew? This is the same television show that has characters like Brienne and Cersei. How, how is this the same show? How is this the same freaking show? You know what? I'll tell you how. Because Cersei and Brienne are actually based off of their characters from the books. Illyria San, after Oberyn dies in the show, is a completely different character to the way she is portrayed in the books from that point on. In the show, she's warmongering and spreading all this dangerous rhetoric for no reason. In the books, she is very rationally advocating for nonviolence because she was there. She understands that Oberyn willingly went into this, knowing that he could die. She was there. She understands that violence is not the answer. And George R. R. Martin, very cleverly, I might add, contrasts this against the Sand Snakes, who are younger and more wild and more aggressive, and they want to avenge their father. So they're warmongering, yes. But also, Doran Martell isn't totally incompetent like he is in the show. So when he knows that they're stirring crap up, he locks them in a fucking tower. He doesn't just let them run rampant knowing that they're plotting against him. The Dornish plot went totally south as soon as they strayed away from the book. As soon as Jamie and Bronn go down to Dorne to rescue Princess Marcella, I knew that that's when this, this, it's done. It's over. It was like the cheesiest, most horribly choreographed fight scenes. Sand snakes were introduced, they were completely one dimensional. You've got one that's a sex kitten. You've got one that's kind of butch and mean. You got one that's got no personality at all. And it's just kind of a shame. It's like they put no effort whatsoever into fleshing out these characters and it just makes me so upset. And then the revenge of the Sand Snakes, the, the quote unquote revenge is like so stupid. Oh, we're just gonna murder Marcella for no reason because Oberyn chose to enter a trial by combat against the freaking mountain of all the people, one of the most dangerous men in the entire Seven Kingdoms. Everyone knew that there was a possibility that Oberyn would die, but it was his choice. Marcella had nothing to do with this. Why would they want to kill Marcella? I guess Oberyn was lying when he said they didn't hurt little girls in Dorne. <laughs> Look, Cersei was right again. And if you pay attention from season to season, all of a sudden, like, two of the Sand Snakes are on the boat with Tristan and like, where is this? Are, are we in King's Landing? Are we still in Dorne? They don't really tell you where we are at this point in time because they were at the dock when the boat left and this boat is idle and there are some buildings nearby. Is this King's Landing? Is this Dorne? I don't freaking know, no one knows. Like how did they go undetected? Did they follow them? Did they, were they, did they sneak on the Dude, are you friends with a real robot? No, man. Really, it's bruh? Maybe it's time for a An switch. ad? Switch to Boost's super reliable and super fast nationwide <laughs> network. Plus, get four lines Well, I guess you gotta, gotta watch an ad with me. A month. <laughs> and get four free phones. The boat? Like, were they hiding on the boat? Like, how did they even freaking get there? That doesn't make any freaking sense. What they did to Arya Hota was a freaking shame. It's way worse than what they did to Barris and Selmy. At least Barris and Selmy fought back. Arya Hota dies with like a little prick in the back. It is ridiculous. And these showrunners really know how to piss off nerds too because they hire Star Trek actor Alexander Siddig from Deep Space Nine who has an immense amount of nerd cred and they say we're gonna put him on Game of Thrones and then they kill him after a few episodes. It was freaking ridiculous. You hire an amazing actor like that to play an amazing character and you just kill him before he even gets a chance to do anything, before he even gets a chance to show why he's amazing in the books. Every single Dornish character is like that. Every single Dornish character in the show is a sad shadow of what they were in the book, with the exception of Oberyn Martell and Illyria Sand in season four. After that, it is straight downhill. I don't know if the Dornish plot has a single redeeming feature. It wasn't even Dorne. It was the freaking Water Gardens. Like, it, Dorne is a giant 
kingdom. It is not just this one castle. Like, it's, they, they don't even get that across. That it, They don't even get it across that it's mostly desert. How do you not get that across? The killing of Doran Martell was done solely for the purpose of shock value. They botched, absolutely botched, the season 5 Dornish plotline. So they say, we're just going to kill it off. We're just going to kill it off. Instead of even trying it, they just say, screw it. We're just going to go in a completely different direction to prove that we're different from the books, to prove that we're going in a different direction. We'll make a better story. We'll tell, we'll tell a better story than genius George R. R. Martin. Okay, sure. Be honest, this is when everyone noticed that the show was 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 going the trash. And in season five, when the Dornish stuff was happening, pretty much everyone was like, yeah, what what is this nonsense? What is this? Everything that made that plot line interesting in the books is totally gone. And there are certain people that have a problem getting into the Dornish plot line in the books because it doesn't have any of the characters that we're familiar with. But once you really get into those characters and you become invested in what's going on, it really picks up and becomes very intriguing because there's plans within plans and conspiracies within conspiracies and who knows what's really going on with Doran Martell and that's why he's such an interesting guy because he's playing savants he's playing the Westeros version of chess and he's moving around those pieces to what end we don't know and we'll never know in the show because he's dead the showrunners definitely caught wind of how much everyone hated this Dorn crap and how much we all hated the Sand Snakes in particular because they killed them in such messed up ways last season. Even I was like, okay, I kind of dig Euron now, even though I still hate that guy that plays Euron. I was kind of like, okay, I commend him for brutally murdering these women. I commend him for doing that. Now, I feel like people are going to throw the S word at me for making this video sexist. But whatever, if that's what you took from a video of legitimate criticisms of a terrible plot line that was the death of a show this this is the this is the fulcrum by which the show turns onto a path of absolute shit. this is when it all just went <laughs> i just don't get it if you don't think george r. r martin's books are feminist enough then you must be reading the wrong book i mean catelyn cersei daenerys brienne are these not strong powerful female characters all in their own way and in the books, these strong female characters also include Ariane Martell, who's not in the show, and the Sand Snakes. They're on that list of layered and complex strong female characters in the books, but in the show that is not at all what they are. Like I have said before, they are caricatures of what they should be. What we're seeing here, I think, is like if Leonardo da Vinci had an unfinished painting, and then some ninth grade art student came up and tried to finish the painting. That's what we're getting with Game of Thrones now. We're getting the finished high school art student version of A Song of Ice and Fire. People are always asking me, if you hate it so much, why do you keep talking about it? If you, why, why do you have so many videos just talking crap about the Dornish plotline? If you hate it so much, just stop talking about it. You know what? Screw you. You don't understand what it's like to be a freaking real nerd. You're right, right. Being a nerd is popular now, but you don't know what it's like to be a real nerd because if you're a real nerd, you get really invested in these things. And I just think that it's really sad that the majority of people in the world will never know what the real Dornish plot line is unless they read A Song of Ice and Fire, which most people will not do because people do not read books like they should. You can tell someone a million times to read a book and they will never do it, but tell them to watch a TV show or to watch a movie, they'll finish it in a week. So for most people now, when they think of Dorne, they're going to think of this wannabe Cena warrior princess nonsense. All right, I should probably end this here before I have a stroke. This video is probably going to get demonetized because I said the word feminism too much. So if you like this channel, consider supporting it on Patreon and make sure you like and subscribe for more ideas of ice and fire. Bad pussy. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, uh, what a I dig it. I dig. I understand every word he said i i agree with it um they just did not do what they were supposed to do and i can't even blame the guy i you know and i've always defended people who just watch the tv series and you know I'll, just as much as i defend the book readers because i have not read the books but i feel like they could have done a lot more to extend it just a little bit more they could have done better with that plot line i just don't i mean the whole thing if you guys watch my reaction after Oberon died you heard me say 
multiple times when I was doing like my after episode reviews and stuff like that. You hear me say multiple times. He chose, he got him, Oberyn got himself killed, legitimately got himself killed. There is nothing to be avenged. You get what I'm trying to say? Because he chose to fight for Tyrion. It was a legitimate, legitimate thing that he did, right? Trial by combat. He chose to fight for Tyrion to save Tyrion lives. He had the mountain and he got, he needed answers. And he did just couldn't finish the mountain and just get it over with. He lost sight of what he was there for. And got his head popped like a watermelon. That's, you can't blame anybody for that. That's what I'm saying. What is she, why? That's what I'm saying. It made no sense to me because, because a sensible person would look at that and say, well, what am I supposed to do? I can't, I can't decide now. And that's what I'm saying. He made a very good point when he said this it made no sense for for to turn on family kill more family after you just lost family kill more family to get power and then calling them weak and i'm like this doesn't even make any sense it's obvious the way how they did it and it's true also that when they found out that everybody was so angry about it they killed them in a brutal way. And it just seems like they were just trying to 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 um cover something up. It just seems that way, okay? So I totally agree with um you know what they were talking what he explained in this video. And as I said, I I knew it was gonna be about the Doran plot line. I just knew it. I just knew it. Because I mean, people may hate on other things, but they especially hate that plot line. They just, they go in on it, you know, and I, I, I reflect the same feeling. Even though I have not read read A Song of Ice and Fire, I, I just know. Because George is not, he doesn't come off as the type of guy who would have had something like that. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it just seemed like. They took the storyline, and, and I mean, it's definitely worse than what they did to Barristan. It, it, it's just bad. It was, It's just terrible. And they could have gone a totally different direction. Even if you didn't want to continue the Doran storyline, you still could have gone a different direction to make, up, to make it up for it. It, it just... Uh, but, hey... It is what it is. The, sh the show is going on to season 8. I'm excited about that. I have some more videos planned for this week. I'm going to do Who is Azora High. I'm also going to do another, uh, the longer Barristan and Sell Me video. So look out for that. And also, my guys, um, stay tuned. Stay tuned. I am really, really trying to get on a schedule for this channel. I'm really, really trying. But because of my my daily life and the things that I do in life to actually make money, <laughs> you know, those things kind of take a little bit more priority than than YouTube. I'm just being honest with you guys. Just take a little bit more priority and it takes up a lot of my time. And trust me, man, Some that's why sometimes, you know, people will come at me and they will say, oh, you seem like you're not so excited and stuff like that. And some of the times when I'm sitting down to do these reactions, I'm super tired. And you guys knew that when I was doing the Game of Thrones reactions, oh, my God. You guys don't know what I went through, man. Like, I was putting the time in, man. But. Um, so now I'm trying to kind of make up for that because I was really like, I'm on a schedule making sure those episodes were out every day and every now and then I would take a break. But I was making sure that those were getting out to you guys every day, 3 p.m., making sure. And it was four parts, five parts, how many parts I have to do. I have to stay up until all of those are rendered. And sometimes I'm going to bed 1, 2 o'clock in the morning um to get up to get back up at like 5 a.m um so it's it was i was 
burning myself out so now i'm kind of just kind of trying to pace myself with you know at this current moment i'm reacting to about five shows on the channel so i'm trying to pace myself sometimes i come home i'm like no nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna react to this tomorrow i'm just gonna look for you know go to my list and look for a short video to react to and just do that and i'm good um for the night but guys I promise you stay tuned i'm gonna have i'm gonna be back on schedule very soon this year is definitely uh, i'm definitely gonna be on that grind again um so it's just taking me a while i'm trying to set some things up i also have the thousand subscribers so i'm getting things in order for the thousand um subscriber giveaway um so guys stay tuned for that make sure you stay tuned for that so once i hit um a thousand subscribers you know how to um, how to enter and all of that stuff what the prizes are going to be um, some of the stuff are definitely going to be um, Game of Thrones related um, other things anime related and stuff like that so stay tuned for that so I'm in the process of doing things so don't think that I'm for neglecting y'all or anything like that I'm just letting you guys know um, that that is what's going on so thank you guys for watching as always and Subscribe to the channel. Tell me what you think about the Dorn storyline, even though I already know what's going to happen in the comment section. Let me know what you think anyways. Leave a like on, on the video. And also, it's your boy Terabyte Reacts, and peace.